limits described on Trump tape. Fury over Russian mutiny. President Putin was seething. U.S. malaria cases. It's the first time in 20 years. Good morning. I'm Steve Kathan with the CBS World News Roundup. A key piece of evidence in the government's case against former President Trump has emerged publicly. It's an audio recording obtained by CBS News. Correspondent Catherine Herridge reports Trump can be heard apparently discussing secret documents at his New Jersey golf club. A newly obtained audio recording may be a key piece of evidence in special counsel Jack Smith's case that alleges former President Trump put national security at risk by mishandling classified documents, including one he suggested was prepared by Joint Chiefs Chair General Mark Milley. This is they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department at him. According to the indictment, the recording from 2021 captured a conversation Trump had at his New Jersey golf club with a book writer, a publisher, and two staffers, none of whom are believed to possess a security clearance. This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confident. <laughs> Trump has repeatedly insisted he declassify all the documents he took with him. But in the recording, yeah. Yeah. Ricky Kleeman, a CBS News legal contributor, says the audio recording still leaves the door open for the defense. He's going to say that he never had a document in his hand up in Bedminster, New Jersey and that he was just waving around some papers willy-nilly. As we hear from CBS's Scott McFarland this morning, a new report analyzes the security run-up to the 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. A Senate Homeland Security Committee investigation says the FBI received alarming and prescient warnings before January 6th about a storming of the Capitol, violence from the Proud Boys, and guns being staged near the Capitol in Virginia. But the committee says the FBI slow-walked, downplayed those warnings, so that Homeland Security intelligence analysts didn't properly share their intelligence. Overseas, Russia has dropped all charges against members of the mercenary group that mutinied but stopped short of Moscow. Here's CBS's Ian Lee. The failed mutiny last weekend still hangs heavy over Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> He lashed out again at Wagner's leadership on state TV last night, saying they would be punished for the rebellion. But he also courted the rank and file, calling many Wagner fighters patriots who were misled and invited them to join the Russian army. The Ministry of Defense announced today that Wagner will now hand over its heavy weapons. Putin tried to mask the uncertainty in the country last night with images that he's firmly in control. Putin also took aim at the West, telling his people that Russia's enemies wanted them to choke on bloody civil strife. On Monday, President Biden distanced the United States from the insurrection. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. U.S. officials tell CBS News another $500 million aid package to Ukraine will be announced today. That'll include Bradley and Stryker armored fighting vehicles. Prosecutors in Idaho say they will seek the death penalty against Brian Koberger, the man charged with the killing of four college students. Court documents call him a continuing threat to society. CBS's Omar Villafranca has new details in the murder case against three San Antonio police officers. They've been charged in the shooting death of 46-year-old Melissa Perez. Body camera video edited by the police shows an officer approaching Perez after she was suspected of cutting wires to an apartment fire alarm system. Hey, hey, Perez ran into her first floor apartment and refused to come out. The officer went to her back patio and removed the window screen. That's when police say she threw a glass candle hitting his arm. You're gonna get shot! Additional officers arrived and hopped onto her patio. Investigators say she then shattered the glass with a hammer. That's when the first shots were fired. It's four minutes after the hour. Well, that's today's news, today's news. I didn't hear any good news, did you? I didn't think so. I guess it's all about perspective. The glass is half full. Well, as always, I want to thank you again for coming along with me on these <coughs> Dash Cam News Adventures. You know the drill. Peace, love, and all that hippie jazz. Bye-bye, everybody.